Summary of the Blind Side by Michael Lewis Lewis starts by talking about how there was a big change in how the best football players played in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Rushers got bigger and faster, giving quarterbacks a little less time to respond or pass the ball to their receivers. In 1985, Lawrence Taylor sacked the famous quarterback Joe Theismann, breaking his leg and ending his career. This may have been the most important football moment of the time. After Theismann got hurt, coaches started looking for big, heavy left tackles who could defend a quarterback's blind side. This is the area, usually to the quarterback's left, that was defenseless when the quarterback turned to throw the ball. Before, all linemen were paid the same, but now left tackles are getting paid more and more like quarterbacks. If the left tackle didn't do a good job of defending the quarterback, like Feisman, the quarterback could get seriously hurt. In the early 2000s, when left tackles were starting to get huge seven-figure pay, a man from the inner city of Memphis named Big Tony tried to get two of his kids into the prestigious Briarcrest Christian Academy. Stephen, Tony's son, was one of them and Michael O'Hare was the other. Big Tony took Michael in because it seemed like Michael didn't have a family of his own. Now, Big Tony is trying to get Michael an education. Even though Michael had low test scores, the Briarcrest administration reluctantly decided to let him in. This was partly because Michael seemed like he could be a good football player, and Briarcrest was full of teachers, administrators, and alumni who loved football. Michael's first days at Briarcrest aren't very good. He is very shy and lonely, and he doesn't say much. He's a slow learner in class, mostly because he hasn't had many of the experiences that his peers take for granted. He's lived his whole life in the inner city. Michael can't play sports right away because he doesn't do well in school. But Sean Tui, the coach of the Briarcrest basketball team, sees Michael watching the games. Sean became a millionaire on his own, even though he grew up in a poor family. So, he gets along better with black kids from poor neighborhoods, like Michael O'Hare, than other Briarcrest coaches do. Sean feels sorry for Michael, but Sean's wife, Leon Tui, is even nicer. She gets Michael food and clothes and drives him wherever he needs to go. Michael works with teachers to get his grades up just enough to be able to play basketball and football. He's big, but he's also fast and quick, which makes him a great basketball player. But Michael seems to be at his best when he plays football. He is so tall and wide that he can tackle anyone. In fact, his teachers think he is probably the biggest kid who has ever gone to Briarcrest. Leon decides to let Michael stay at her house instead of going back to the inner city every night when he starts to stand out as a football player. She figures out that he lives with his mother, but she doesn't ask about her. As Michael starts to stand out during football practices, Division I colleges start to give him scholarships. When he's with his friends, he gets quieter and more outgoing. Before, he barely spoke, but now he laughs and makes jokes. Around this time, Michael's parents, the Tuies, decide to take him in as their own. Collins and Sean Jr., the Tuies' two biological children, like Michael. Sean Jr., who is much younger, likes Michael the most. During Michael's junior and senior years of high school, the Briarcrest football team does very well, thanks in large part to Michael's size and skill. The Briarcrest football team wins the Tennessee state title in 2004, Michael's senior year. Most people in the state think that Michael is the best football player there is. Michael starts to think about college in his final year. Michael has been told by football teachers from all over the country that he will play in the NFL and probably be a very good player. They offer him free tuition and full room and board at their schools. Michael starts to choose between LSU, Tennessee, and the University of Mississippi, Ole Miss. Michael seems to be most interested in Ole Miss, where both the Tuies and Sue Mitchell, Michael's teacher, went to school. Michael has a problem, though. If he wants to go to college on a sports grant, he needs to raise his GPA. With Sean's help, Michael is able to prove that he has a learning disability. This means that Sue Mitchell can help him take correspondence classes to raise his GPA. His GPA goes above the NCAA minimum, 
and he decides to go to Ole Miss for free, where Ed Orgeron will teach him and he will get free room and board. Michael gets involved in an NCAA investigation soon after he picks Ole Mississippi. Someone, or maybe more than one person, has told the NCAA that the Tuies adopted Michael because they wanted to get top athletes for Ole Miss and may have even gotten money from the University of Mississippi for doing so. These claims hurt Lee and and Sean, but Sean helps Joyce Thompson, who is sent by the NCAA to talk to Michael and Sean. Michael stands out as a left tackle during his first year at Ole Miss, even though the team as a whole doesn't do very well. Sue Mitchell keeps helping him with his classes, and the Tuies build another house near the University of Mississippi campus so they can be close to their adopted son. Michael seems to be getting used to his new life at college, but he gets into a fight with Antonio Turner, a friend, after Turner says something sexually offensive about Lee and Ann Collins. Michael beats up Turner and hurts a young child who is walking nearby by mistake. Michael runs away from the accident scene because he is scared. But with the help of Sean and Lee Ann, he calms down, goes back to Ole Miss, and avoids getting arrested for what he did. At the end of the book, Michael Lewis tells us more about his family and his past. His mother, Denise, was an addict of crack cocaine and a bad parent. Michael and his bigger brothers spent a lot of their early years looking for food and clothes. When he was eight, he was sent to several foster homes, but he always ran away. Later, he was sent to a hospital center, but he got out and went back to living in Memphis's inner city. He moved in with Big Tony when he was a youngster. This is where the blind side starts. Michael has a great time at Ole Mississippi. When the book ends, he is still very close with Lee and Collins, Sean, and Sean Jr., and he is likely to be picked up by the NFL. About the author Michael Lewis went to Princeton and studied art history. After that, he worked for an art broker. In 1985, he went to the London School of Economics and got an MA in economics. After that, he worked for an investment company. At the end of the 1980s, Lewis became a writer who wrote about money. His first book, Liar's Poker, came out in 1989. It was about the history of mortgage-backed bonds. Since the 1990s, Lewis has written for many different magazines and newspapers, such as the New York Times Magazine, Vanity Fair, and Slate. Moneyball, published in 2003, The Blind Side, published in 2006, The Big Short, published in 2010, Flash Boys, published in 2014, and The Undoing Project, published in 2016, are some of his other books. Each of these books explores a little-known area of statistics or economics. Lewis lives with his wife and three kids in Berkeley, California. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.